All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cowboy Slot Channel Sunday uh, Real Talk episode. This is episode number 11, already getting up there with season two. Uh, my name is Brantley. This is Mark. We're going to be the slot techs answering your question today. If this is your first time here, it's an open forum Q&A. You guys can ask anything you'd like. We do try to get through as many questions as we possibly can, but uh, we do get very busy in these streams. So if we don't happen to answer your question, we do always have our website, which is ropethejackpot.com that has a free chat form that you guys can use 24 seven. Uh, anyway, how are you doing, Mark? I'm doing great, man. Uh, big day tomorrow. Eclipse is coming. Oh yeah. That eclipse. <laughs> uh, fortunately it's going to be cloudy here. <laughs> I've waited seven years for this day and it's going to be cloudy. So uh, I think my wife's getting up early to go drive, but I've seen it once. So I'm okay with not battling that again, but uh, a lot of people are excited around here and the traffic's going to be a mess around our area. I'm sure. So oh, I'm sure. sometimes I hope you guys are able to see it. We're not able. We're not able to see it over here right now. I'm. No. I'm actually in in Windover. I'm at the Windover oh, okay. Nugget right now at, at at this moment, but just for one night. So, uh, but yeah, no, we're not going to be able to see the eclipse or anything from here. But I, I hear that it's really cool to see, and I think it's been it's been how many years since the last like full total? I think eclipse? it was 2000. Uh, if, if Jody's in here listening, she's going to kill me. I think it was 2017. Or 2018 and we <laughs> were actually right? in wyoming to see that one oh right yeah the, that one came through here but yep but not that not one this epic time. not a cloud in the sky we had a great time that's awesome yeah it'd, it'd be cool it would be cool to see uh, at some point the only at, thing i did learn and you already know this because you live in wyoming is that those roads are not designed for traffic no <laughs> not at all <laughs> not it at was all. it was a nightmare to get out of there and uh First town we came on, everybody had to go to the bathroom and they had signs out there that said, no restrooms, no restrooms, no restrooms. So we had to drive to the next town. We just kept having to do that over and over and over again. I'm like, oh man, <laughs> Wyoming's not built for this many people. <laughs> no, it is not. Yeah. It is definitely not. Um, well, hey, what, let's say we start getting to some questions. Uh, I know we already got, uh, we got 200, uh, to, well, it's, it's climbing up pretty quickly, almost 300 people now watching on all platforms. So uh, welcome in to everybody just now joining us and uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll start the roll with some questions. I'll go ahead and uh, and take the first one here from Jeff. Uh, Jeff says, do you ever come to Florida Hard Rock Casino? What are your thoughts on blackjack machines? Are they set up like slots uh, throwing hands versus a dealer? Good question. So first part of the question, no, I have not been to Hard Rock um, down there in Florida, but it is on my list. I know there's a lot of casinos down there. Um, a lot of good people down there that I want to go down and see. So uh, first part of the question is no, I have not. Mark, have you been down there? Nope. And then as for the blackjack machines, uh, you know, here's here's the thing about them. You know, with any digital table game, whether it's blackjack, roulette, craps, whatever, the actual action of the game. So in, in this instance, blackjack, the dealing of the cards, the shuffling of the cards, all of that, that aspect is still random. The control aspect comes from what you're allowed to do on that game. So, for example, like if it's a tighter payback percentage, so to speak, they might not let you split aces or they might not let you double down or something like that. But the actual act of dealing out the cards is going to be random and it's going to mimic the exact same as a regular table game would. So uh, I hope that helps to answer your question on that. Thank you very much, Jeff. Do appreciate it. And I'll take one more here from Scott about HHR. Uh, is it worth playing HHR slots uh, without progressives or should you stick to the ones that do have them? So um, to me, HHR slots are worth it no matter what. Uh, the reason being, there's a couple big differences about HHR that not a lot of people know. For starters, um, HHR, the house, so to speak, the OTB, does not retain a portion of coin in. So they're actually rooting for you to win. The only time that the OTB gets paid is when there is a jackpot. Whenever you get paid, they get paid as well. So it's completely unlike a casino where a casino is taking a portion of the profit, a portion of the coin in. An HHR facility is not. Um, so they're really always worth playing. Plus, with those devices, you're playing against other players. You're playing against a group. You're playing against a pool. So every bit of money that's going into that pool is just making the pool bigger and bigger and bigger. And somebody's going to get that prize. So HHR in general is worth it. I wouldn't really focus too much on whether it has a progressive or doesn't have a progressive. Um, either one is going to be a pretty good choice. Uh, but thank you very much, Scott, for your question. Really do appreciate it. All right, Mark, I'll let you go ahead and grab some. All right. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Moto Den says, thinking about heading up to Windstar tonight. Do they have any class three slots or is it all bingo? No, they have a very healthy mix. 
Um, I would actually recommend not playing the class three slots there, though. I think the bingo games, especially the uh, the ones with physical reels, are really good options there. Um, it's gotten to the point now when Dave and I go up there, and even Jody, we pretty much stay away from the class three machines most of the time, uh, just because we've had a lot of success on the bingo style machines. So don't don't fear for those. Still give them a shot while you're there. Um, but yeah, about half of the facility is class three and the other half is uh, bingo. They have them all kind of intertwined together. So good luck up there. Um, be careful if you stay the night. Tomorrow's traffic is going to be a nightmare around this area because of the eclipse. So if you're going tonight, come back tonight. Would be my recommendation for sure. All right. And Simon S says, comps, I stay within an hour of my local casino. I'm getting very good offers Go to the casino rooms, food and free play. What happens if I choose not to use my comps weekly? Um, gosh, it really depends on the casino, but more often than not, the longer you take, like as soon as you break your pattern of going every so often, uh, they might start upping it a little bit to try to get you to come back. Now, again, it depends on the casino, but most casinos, again, remember all those comps are, is marketing. It's marketing to get you back. And so they're going to try different things to try to get you to come back. And so, uh, that's one reason why I typically stay away from Vegas every three months, because I know that my comps will be good every three months if I show up then. But if I show up every week, the free play is going to go down. Everything's going to go down because they don't need to entice me to come. Like I'm already coming on my own goodwill. Right. So it really depends on the casino again. But, you know, if you let it lie, don't feel like it's just going to start dropping off. They're going to still want you to come back, especially if you have a long history there. Absolutely. Sure. Oh, here's another Windstar question. Yeah, go, go ahead, Mark. So Zachary says, uh, going to Windstar tomorrow for my birthday. Watch out for that traffic. With the bingo system, is there an advantage to playing later in the evening due to less players in the on the servers? No, there is no advantage. Uh, Dave and I have played at all times, all different types of crowds, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there is no advantage play. You're still playing bingo. You just have to have at least one other person playing, which in Windstar is always going to be happening. So. Oh, yeah. You know, it's there's no advantage to it. Just sit down and play just like you would any other uh, class three style game. You know, pick the pick the right machines. Look for the lower volatility. There still is those at, that are kind of play like double diamond, like the single pay line, like uh, your. Um, uh, let's see. Lucky Ducky, Red Ruby, um, Money Bags. Those are the games that I would stick to um, if you're going to play the class two. Uh, they're just they're very consistent in the way they play and they play very similar to a double diamond machine, which is why I recommend them. So, all right, back to you, Bradley. Yeah, we got some super chats here. $5 from uh, B Brown Lee. Thank you very much. The super chats, super stickers are greatly helpful. So really do appreciate that. Uh, your question, are slots more tight since COVID in your opinion? So I'm, I'm actually going to break this, uh, break this apart into, uh, into two. Um, so the first part, uh, are slots tighter since COVID? The answer is no. Uh, the second part uh, is the the part in your uh, in your opinion. Um, so one thing that makes cowboy slots different. Mark and myself, we both do this job. We we still do this job on a daily basis. We've got a lot of experience doing this job. We don't give opinions. That that's that's the thing. So our slots tighter. The answer is no. That's that's not an opinion. Um, I have won more this year than previous years in the past. Um, a lot of people have. They're, they're not tighter. Uh, so they the machines have not changed whatsoever since COVID. But and thank by you the way, you can, yeah. we can prove this by going and looking at the return to player statistics for the past four or five years on the state of Nevada's website. So you can go and look this up. Yeah. And you will see that there has been no difference uh, year over year. Maybe 1% here and there, up and down, up and down. That's just variance. But it's proof, you know, that, that <laughs> nothing has changed since COVID. Uh, a lot of people feel that way, though. I, I get it, but yeah, it's, it hasn't changed. They're not trying to recoup from something that happened four years ago. So, exactly. So you don't have to worry about the slot machines being tighter uh, right. since COVID. And once again, thank you very much for your super chat. We really do appreciate it. We got another one here, four ninety nine from G Bear. Thank you very much. Uh, Vegas this weekend at MGM Grand after six months. All right. Any suggestions besides Cherry's Jubilee? Well, the great thing about Las Vegas is. No matter what slot machine you are looking for, whether you're looking for old classics or whether you're looking for the newest machine, Las Vegas is going to have it. MGM Grand is in a pretty good spot. They've got a pretty good selection on their floor. 
But if you don't find something that you like, you can easily walk over to New York, New York. There's a lot of different games over there. There's a lot of low volatility games. If you don't like those, you can walk right next door to Park MGM and so on and so forth. Um, there's really a lot of, I mean, pretty much every single game that we talk about is in Las Vegas somewhere. And most likely it's in a cl close proximity to one of the casinos that you're staying at, including MGM Grand. So recommendations besides Cherry's Jubilee, that's going to be any of the games that we've talked about on the channel. The Double Diamonds, the Ainsworth games, you know, those other low and volatility games. Blazing Sevens is there. Majestic Lions is there. There's a bunch out there. So uh, that's, that is one of, the, one of the really good things about Las Vegas is pretty much anything that you're looking for, they're going to have usually within a close proximity of another casino. So thank you once again very much for your super chat. Really do appreciate it. And I'll go ahead and um, I'll, uh, I'll take, uh, take one more here. Uh, CSX uh, says, uh, do you and Mark do taxes when you're getting a hand pay? Do you have the casino take taxes out or do you have take it to a CPA? Uh, and how can we stop Uncle Sam from pinching our jackpots? Well, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, you can't. You, you know, U Uncle Sam's going to find it one way or another. He's going to get his money. Um, everybody's tax situation is different. Uh, we cannot legally give tax advice on the channel. Um, you're asking what I personally do and what Mark personally does. Again, we're very, very different. Um, I do not have taxes taken out at the casino because I hit enough jackpots throughout the year that I can tally it all at the end of the year. And usually losses are going to outweigh and so on and so forth. And I have an accountant that takes care of that. Uh, Mark, what about you? Uh, I have taxes taken out. Uh, I just yeah. don't want the headache. Um, and I don't know, you know, I've really dialed back my casino visits and level that I play over the last uh, couple of months. And so I have all taxes taken out now uh, just so I don't have to worry about it. And, you know, if, if you're that kind of player, um, that's the best advice I can give you is to take the taxes out while you can. Uh, Cause yeah. Yeah. Everybody's situation is different though. So like yep. if you're, if you're somebody that if you go to the casino, maybe a couple times and you're used to hitting maybe like one or two jackpots a year, something like that, then yes, absolutely. You want to take taxes out. And then anything beyond that is going to be a personal choice between you and your accountant. So hope that helps. And also we have, uh, this is Ethan. Uh, he's our video editor. So he does all of those really fun intros. Hey, he is in the chat today. Casey is tech. Uh, you know what, guys, too? He has a YouTube channel of his own. I'm sure he would love the support. So uh, be sure to head over to his channel, Casey is tech, and give him a subscribe as well. Uh, and also thank you very much, Ethan, for all the hard work that you do and for being with us here this evening. We do have another soup chat here from Corey, 999. Thank you so much for that, Corey. Really do appreciate it. In theory, if I only played one denomination for two years, could I deplete the payout option of that denomination and it would only pay on other denominations? So it's a loaded question, but the answer is really no. Um, I mean, we're talking, I mean, these, you know, again, slot machines, it's, you're talking millions and millions and millions of spend. You, you're probably, even if you were to go to the casino consistently for two years, you're probably not going to do 10 million spins. Um and it's, it's always going to keep going and going and going through time. So it's not, you really can't deplete one and, you know, it's not a progression kind of, kind of thing right. in that term. <laughs> uh, Mark, you want to add to that at all? No, I mean, that's, it's very true. Like you got to remember that slot machines don't, it's a math program. It just runs. Okay. It, it doesn't, it runs the same way it does the day it's turned on and the day it runs a, a year later, a year later, it runs exactly the same. So it doesn't matter what has happened previously. So you can't really deplete it in a way where it's not going to pay out anymore. Um, it is a installed math program that runs one way and that's it. <laughs> so exactly. Nothing going on there. But good question. And thank you once again for that super chat. Really do appreciate it. Awesome. All right, Mark, you want to grab a grab another one? Sure. All right. Uh, Linda Peters says, do slot machines actually get moved or is a new game simply loaded? I've never seen a machine get moved. Oh, of course they get moved. They get moved a lot. Um, it really depends on the casino too. But, you know, what Brantley and I are always saying is that the reason they move machines around or even swap out the game kits, which is what you're also talking about, is to get more people playing. That's all. I mean, a slot machine that is not being played is lost revenue and lost floor space for that casino, which is the most precious thing that they have. That's why they put slot machines in every square inch that they possibly can inside of a casino. <laughs> they stack them in. But if they have a bank of machines or even a single machine that's not getting played, 
Um, it's up to the slot manager to decide what to do about that. Sometimes they just get another game in, installed. Other times they move it around to maybe get some more eyeballs on it so people may, may not know it was there, and so they get to move it around. So it's a constant thing. They're looking at the statistics of who is playing what and when. And if they got to move stuff around to get play on all the machines, they're going to do that. Um, otherwise, that machine is out and something else is going to come in. Good Absolutely. question, Linda. All right. Let's see. I got this question uh, today as well. Shara says, do older machines pay better than newer machines? No, we've they're done a couple, we've done an episode about this. Yeah, too. payback percentage is exactly the same, uh, whether it's old or new, old style, new style, same math. Uh, we get this. I think the question I got was about double top dollar is if you played, should I play the old school one or should I play the new one? The math is exactly the same if you're comparing the same game type, like the single pay line. Uh, so it really doesn't matter which one you play. Uh, but yeah, they're 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 the same. I think the biggest the biggest thing with that is more like the new style games that are coming out. Obviously, higher volatility is kind of trending right yes. now. You know, we're seeing a lot of puff and even more, even more, you know, <laughs> extra most bestest puff kind of thing. Yeah, you know, like right. those are getting kind of kind of crazy. So, you know, comparing like something like that game to a double diamond, yeah, the older one is gonna is gonna pay better in the sh in the short term right. uh, for for that sense. Uh, we do got a couple super chats uh, really quick here. Two dollars from uh, from Bo. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, favorite game at the Shoshone Rose? I would have to say mine would be Dollar Action, just because it's really hard to find Dollar Action, believe it or not. And a lot of uh, most casinos that I go to don't have Dollar Action, but we have it at the Shoshone Rose. What about what about you, Mark? Uh, well, it's been a lot of changes since I've been out there. Um, probably Thunder Cash still. Yeah. Uh, you know, love and hate. <laughs> but <laughs> I haven't been out there since they brought all those other machines in. So my opinion might change the next visit. And we're supposed to be getting some more too, which is yep. really nice. Thank you very much for that super chat, by the way. We really do appreciate it. And then we got another one for here from uh, from Nathan uh, on a multi denom penny slot, which is better. Uh, which uh, it, is it better winning odds to play max low denom or min high denom? That one is going to be very game specific on that. Um, a lot of games, I mean, it really depends on the game that you're playing. Um, some games, I mean, we can, you know, if you look at the game rules, it will tell you you do have a better chance at something in particular, but always remember that that is just a chance, and that percentage can be very small. It can be very fractional, so it's not worth going outside of your budget realm to play. You should always, no matter what your denomination is, what your bet level is, play with what is in your budget. Typically speaking, it is better to play or the higher denom, but again, it's going to be game specific because there's some games out there where the higher the bet level is better, and then there's other games out there where the higher the denom is better. So it really just depends on this. Mark, do you want to add anything to it? Yeah. Um, the, the thing that I always say is make sure before you make this decision that you can cover all the features of the game. Uh, that should be your most important decision. So if you play nickels, but you can't do max bet on nickels. And because you can't do max bet, you're giving up the chance at progressives or a bonus or something like that. Then that's a no go. You want to play the pennies at that point because you got to make sure your bet covers all the features of the game. That's how you get the most potential return uh, because that's how the game was designed. So uh, that's my only thing to add to that. Yeah. And uh, we got we got another one here. Then uh, I'll let you uh, take some uh, questions, Mark. Okay. Um, let's yeah, see. Four ninety nine. Thank you both for your knowledge. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate that. We do work hard to bring you guys the best possible, um, current and most accurate information. So we really do appreciate that. Thank you guys for uh, those super chats. All right, Mark. Okay. And for the dude that is copying and pasting his question over and over again, you're not going to get answered that way. I'm sorry, my friend. <laughs> We got you. We got you. Just post it once. We'll get to it. All right. So uh, let's see. This is a good question. I'm not sure. The Dub Dubsky says, do you know of any triple double moolah machines in Vegas? I haven't seen any. I thought New York, New York had one, but I didn't see one. No, before. I don't think so. Um, and I don't think that I was going to say uh, four queens downtown, but I don't think it had it either. So we'll be on the lookout, but I have not seen that. I have not seen that yet. All right. Um, I have seen this one, though. Chris P., hello, do Vegas casinos still have the Tabasco machine you have in your mm -hmm. bins? Yeah. 
Uh, I know Four Queens has two of those, so uh, it's definitely downtown. Um, a lot of places downtown, also. Not sure on the strip. I don't remember where else. Oh, New York, New York does have them. I think it has. Two yeah, of I have. Them. I have seen seen a couple of them. There. Yeah, I think it is there. Yep. All right. Let's see. This is a good one here. So Scratch It Lucky says, how long are those slot vouchers valid for? It really depends on the casino. Um, Windstar is 14 days. So yeah, some weeks. are sneaky. <laughs> some yeah. are sneaky. Um, uh, we heard from somebody on uh, one of our comments that, uh, that whatever casino they're at is three days. So <laughs> wow, it'll, it'll be printed right on the voucher down below here. It'll be printed valid for how many days. So make sure you pay attention to that. I think Vegas is all 90 days for the most part, you know, pretty much anywhere there, but yeah, I'll check it. They do expire. They do. Expire. Yes. They, yes, they do. All always, always check that. Yes. Hey, we got, uh, we do have a nine ninety nine super chat here from Corey. Corey, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, is deal or no deal uh, game random as the TV show? Not, not as random as the TV show. No, <laughs> no, definitely not as random. It, it's, it's Nothing still random. Really. Just, <laughs> yeah. It's just not as random as the TV show is. Have you played this, that this one? This is a good time to remind have? everybody too, that, um, it, it, when people ask are slot machines truly random, it's hard to say yes, because it's not, it's yes and no. There's two parts to it. One is a random aspect, but the other part is the control, which determines and how it keeps in check with the payback percentage. Okay. So it can't be just the wild west random. Otherwise people, you know, when you spun the wheel on wheel of fortune, it would be completely random every single time, but you don't, you see thirties and 35s and 25s, very low amounts are weighted there. Um, that's all by design, but the random aspect is that you don't know what's going to come next. Okay. That's the part that's random. On and neither the does the machine or the casino. That's right. Nobody knows. Um, and I guess I'll go ahead and plug it. Um, I just did a video today over on the gamble smart channel about how slot machines actually work. That's a good episode. <laughs> so if you really are interested, um, and you can hang through just a little bit of math, I did just a little bit, uh, go check that out. Uh, it was a lot of fun, very educational. So if you want to know how all that stuff works, how it's random, how it's not all that, good video to check out. But uh, yeah, it is not as random as the TV show. There's going to be payback percentages built into that. Um, and that's just, you know, that's how every slot machine has to be built, unfortunately. <laughs> or fortunately, I don't know, either way. All right. Let's see, Ted, I think you asked this on our show on Wednesday. Uh, do you think it's okay to play Wheel of Fortune and only bet $5 to get the regular spin versus 7 or 10 to get the gold spin? Um, no, I think our answer stays the same as when you asked <laughs> before. <laughs> if you're not going to play the gold spin, then go try to find a two or three credit Wheel of Fortune, uh, preferably a two credit, um, because that's basically the same game, except you don't have to bet five to get it. So. Yeah, if you're not going to play the gold spin, go try to find another Wheel of Fortune. I just don't yeah. recommend doing that. Find the regular version. Yes, yes. Uh, and Bridget Lever says, yesterday played low volatile machine, worked my way up, went to high limit room, hit 5,000. Nice. Woo -hoo. I know you, I saw the correction that you said woohoo. Uh, this is the way to do it, guys. This is what Brantley and I are just beating to death with you guys. Like when you first get into a casino, Walking up to Huff and even more Puff Platinum Edition is not the way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> super <laughs> it ultra, is not the way platinum. to start out. Yeah, Platinum, Super Duper, Diamond, whatever. Um, that is just not good strategy. Good strategy is to start at the low volatility games, even though they're boring. They're incredibly boring. Okay, I get it. <laughs> um, there's no bonus rounds. There's no progressives. There's no flashiness to them. They're just you know, sometimes there's no sound on them, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, but these are the games that you should really start on when you get into the casino and build that bankroll up. And not only are you doing that, but you're doing yourself a service by generating more coin in and coin out, which generates more comps. OK, so start at those games. Make yourself a goal that if you double your money or even let's say you get up 50 percent, you put 100 bucks in, you get up to 150. Play that 50 bucks in a huff and more puff or play that 50 bucks in a dragon link or a lightning link or something. And then if you lose that, go back and build up again and just do that. Go back, back and forth and just bounce back and forth. What you don't want to do is try as much as you can to play a high volatility game on your original bankroll. You want to do that on your winnings after building up on the lower volatility games. Okay. And so 
that's always going to be our recommendation. Try not to go in and just play the high volatility stuff. And what Bridget says is very true. This is the way to do it. You know, Brantley has countless videos. He had a great pinball run where he did this. You know, start out, you know, and build yourself up, but only play off of your winnings. Like play risky off your winnings and not off your bankroll. Okay. So I hope exactly. that helps. But, uh, congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, very, very good. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. And Anthony, thank you very much for your $5 super sticker. We really do uh, really greatly appreciate that. Uh, Seattle Susie Q says, I uh, spent nine hours at Yamava on Thursday. Uh, I know I'm playing the hands right. I lost uh, playing all sorts of video poker. Uh, just never got dealt uh, what you need to win. Uh, I went over to low volatility slots and won it all back. Another great story. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Seattle Susie Q, really do appreciate that. And uh, uh, one here for uh, for Mark. Uh, Mark just wanted to say thank. Uh, wanted to say that your video on home slots with the S plus pinball and top dollar refurb is great and definitely helped <laughs> me. Just got an S plus pinball. It's my first slot. That's a great first slot. That's a great first. That slot, is a man. great first slot to have. I'm still trying to get that one back. <laughs> well, when you're ready to sell, you come to us. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, it's going to be a bidding war between Brantley and I. Right. <laughs> you might, you <laughs> might end a, up with a lot of money for that. <laughs> it's a great machine. It's, it's it an is, awesome it machine. Uh, and uh, Barbara says, at, at Casino Grand's open, uh, Grand, I can't talk today. At Casino Grand Openings, are the slots loose or just seems seems like the, when I, the one in Kentucky opened a few years ago, but now not so much. So um, the answer is going to be no. You know, every everybody always asks about, you know, casinos changing payback percentages and all that. Guys, I'm, I'm telling you, Mark's telling you, we've said it a lot. The casinos really do not change the payback percentage. They, they truly don't. It is a giant hassle for them to do. It does them no good in the short term, anything like that. Um, also keep in mind, because I noticed you said it seems it seemed like <laughs> it when it first opened. Seems like is always the, the key word. You know, there, yeah, there's a lot of things like in gambling. Yeah, there's a lot of things in gambling um, and just human nature, human psychology in general that, you know, something might seem something, you know, you, you might it might seem like the machine is cold. It might seem like the machine is hot, but it's not, you know, that's it's just the feeling that we get. You know, everybody gets those feelings. I mean, we've gotten those feelings, too. So it's perfectly natural. But no, the, the slot machines are not uh, changing. They don't change them for events, times, days, holidays, anything like that crowd sizes, grand openings, construction, anything of that nature. So you can rest assured that when you are going to play, you know, it, it's going to be a fair and equal opportunity each time that you go. So thank you very much for your question. And we got another $10 uh, super, super chat here. Guys, you are rocking it with super chats tonight. Really do appreciate it. Uh, thank you both for the great tips and advice. I really look forward to tuning in and listening and learn. Thank you so much for being here. We really do appreciate it greatly. All right. Uh, Mark, you want to grab, uh, grab some? Sure. Uh, I'll grab this one because it just came in yeah. and it's kind of relevant. So John from Facebook says, how could lowering the payback percentage not benefit them? LOL. It will in the long run, but not in the short run. OK, so the myth that Las Vegas casinos will tighten up all the machines for the weekend because the California crowd's coming in. They cannot. I mean, in that short amount of time, it wouldn't even be a blip on their spreadsheets if they were to lower everything. Um, because these things are on a very long term scale. OK, and you got to think like that. That's what casinos think like. They think if we put this machine in operation and it gets played, we're going to get 10 percent of everything that comes into that machine and we don't have to touch it. And then multiply that by the thousands of machines that they have in there. They're making so much money. They don't need to do anything else. OK, and it's it is a giant headache to go through and try to change all of them. So when we say that, it just means in the short term, like over a weekend or even over a month, they're not going to notice any kind of difference like that. It takes a lot of spins uh, before the variant starts to shrink. So, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Bobby Earl, another five. Hey, uh, thank you, Bobby. Really appreciate that. Thank you, Bobby. For all of those. Bobby's uh, been doing that for a year and a half. Yeah, man. I know. <laughs> if if you, if you, if y'all get, if y'all get gifted a membership, be sure to tune in tomorrow because tomorrow is member Monday. So we have a special live stream just for members. So that always happens on Mondays. So thank you very much, Bobby Earl, for that. Really do appreciate it. Awesome. All right. Wow. Uh, let's see. I can uh, I can grab a, grab a okay. couple here. Yeah, you're good. Uh, Richard says, Tampa Hard Rock, can they change the payouts in certain parts of the casino? No, um, they, they don't. You know, the, and this kind of, you know, it again, it ties back to what we were just saying. You know, pay, 
here's the, here's the thing. And I, I really hope that everybody watching this um, and everybody that watching, watching this in the future, uh, when it's not live can really, really remember this hard payback percentage is the most misunderstood thing by the players. Players simply don't understand how it works. And you know what? We don't expect you to, you know, or that's, it's a very, very complex thing, but the only thing that you need to remember and realize is payback percentage is the long term. It's the long term aggregate. When they set up the machine, the machine gets set up. It gets set up once. The casino knows that at the end of that machine's lifetime, whether it's five years, 10 years, 20 years plus, they're going to make a 5% profit or whatever the household is off of that machine. It has nothing to do. The casino could not give a shit less what happens within that <laughs> short term window. Uh -oh, they don't Bradley. care. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, I, I got to put uh -oh, some in the swear jar. I don't have, all right, I'm putting some in there. <laughs> Bert, Bert will put some in the swear jar. But, but that's the thing. It's the most misunderstood thing is players do not understand how payback percentage works. Does it affect you? Not necessarily. Not necessarily you in your session because it is the aggregate of everybody. Every single person that will ever touch that machine, that is what that payback percentage means. The casino does not need to change it. They don't need to adjust it. Anything, anything of that nature whatsoever. That is the, you know, that's, that's always the biggest misunderstanding. And, you know, here's the thing, like we understand, you know, we understand it can be a very difficult thing because if we were to sit here and go through exactly how, the payback percentage works, which by the way, we have a couple times. Uh, and we do have some episodes both on this channel and on Gamble Smart, some great episodes all about payback percentage. So I uh, highly do recommend that you check out the video library as well on that. But if we were to sit here and just start doing a whole entire math lecture on the law of, <laughs> you know, the law of averages, the law of large numbers, you know, standard deviations, all of that breaking down, you know, it would, it would take forever. But you can rest assured that the payback percentage is not getting changed whatsoever. And not only that, but even if, we'll just say even if, long shot, even if the payback percentage was to get changed, you would never notice, no. ever. So hopefully, hopefully Actually, that that clears that Let me clears pull that this up real quick because I think this is very relevant. So yes, um, that was we a didn't great publish, we, I didn't publish this live because we had some quality issues, but we'll probably do it again. At some point. So what I did was all the machines that I have here at the house, I cleared them and I set them all to a payback percentage that nobody knew that was watching the live, including the people that were here with me playing Jody and Diane. Um, only I knew what the payback percentages were. And we sat there and played for about 40 minutes or so. And then I asked everybody to vote which one belongs to which payback percentage, which game belongs to which payback percentage. And it was pretty much all over the board. Everybody is around. It's about basically 25% on every because people can't tell, right? Just like we said. But the one I think the one that really surprised people the most is that one of the games uh, was a thousand was only paid back 44% during the time that we played, but it was actually set at 90%. So it was actually one of the higher ones compared to the others that I played. And so that, that was over a lot of spins, guys. And so it's not something you're going to notice in any kind of short term like that. It's going to take a long, long time. Um, people that say that they can sit down at two identical machines and be able to tell which is a better, bigger payback percentage, they're, they're fooling themselves. You know, it's just not, it's not something a human can detect. Okay. And that's why we try to get you guys not to focus so heavily on that because it's not something that you should waste any kind of brain cycles on. Yeah. You should be thinking about all these other things like volatility of the game you're playing, the amount of money you're putting in, the amount of money you're deciding to cash out with. Those are the things you should put in all your pressure or all your thoughts into um, and put all that other stuff out of your mind because it's just it's not going to help you. So and those are the things that you as the player can control, too. So right. Right. Cash exactly. out. Right. Picking the right game. And uh, Mark, you got a super chat there from Corey. I'll let you pull, the, pull, pull oh, that okay. up. That Let's was a see. great video as well. See, Corey says, no need to read this, but your video explaining confirmation bias will save me a lot of money. Much appreciated. Yeah. I don't remember the title of that one. Um, yeah. Oh, it was uh, why, why can't people understand how slots work? And we go into the whole psychology behind it because there is um, what confirmation bias is, which is basically in a short sentence is you doing something and then getting a result back that you expected. And then 
you confirm that saying that's what happened. I did this. This was the result. So it has to be true. And we do this in all of our aspects of life, not just with playing slot machines, but slot machines are like the king of this. Um, people rubbing the screen and then getting a bonus round, people fast stopping and then getting the bonus round, you know, stuff like this. People think that they are in control, that they're the ones doing that. But all it is is confirmation bias. Um, it's, a, it's a fascinating subject. If you really want to get into it, do some Google researching on confirmation bias. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll figure out why you feel that way. <laughs> you yeah. know. It's it's a real thing. And actually, I'm going to pull this question up just because it goes right along with what we were saying uh, here from Jesse. When did the gaming industry know uh, or take advantage of the psychological effect that it has on people to be addicting since the dawn of gambling, since the very yeah. first casino? You yeah. know, at some, point, <laughs> at some point, at some point in history, somebody really, really, really smart sat down and he thought or, you know, they thought to themselves, you know what? Most people don't understand math. I wonder how I can take advantage of most people not understanding math. And the slot machine was born. That's literally what it is. You know, yep. so, you know, it's it, all gambling is not even just slots, but other things. All gambling is, is a very, very strong emotional pull. That's all it is. How you become successful at not just slots, but gambling is controlling yourself controlling the actions that you do you're not once you get it in your mind that you're not trying to control the machine but rather you're trying to control yourself and you're not getting caught up in those flashy lights and those graphics and oh that pig is really big i better go play that pig and you stop and think well can i afford to play the pig that is when you become a better gambler so very very good comment good, well that. said bradley yeah very good Love comment all right. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll take a couple more. We do have no, you guys. Good. We do have quite a few questions backed up. And also we got uh, 615 of you watching right now on all platforms. Uh, just really quick, if you're watching over on Facebook or even if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. It is 100% free. It helps us out. It shows appreciation. And hey, it's good karma. So hit that subscribe <laughs> button for good luck and good karma. We'd really appreciate that. Um, Doug says, I play pinball in Arkansas and got the bonus with any pinball uh, on uh, on the line nine uh, played back it played back in Kansas. It won't give me a bonus. What's up? Nine line pinball is is more is pretty difficult. Um, it, it takes a lot. It's not that it's more difficult. It's that it takes a lot more money. So you can it's going to feel like it's a lot more volatile because it's going to take a lot more money to get the same result that you are used to, especially if you're used to playing pinball. Um, nature of randomness is going to play a key part, but also just overall budget. Um, it does take a bigger budget to play the nine line pinball game, unfortunately. And uh, June says, uh, is it true when a game has a lot of wins in a short period of time after giving nothing for a long time, is the machine leveling out? No. Uh, it is it is not true. So, you know, and Mark mentioned this in his video today, which was very good. The machine does not actively balance itself. Balancing does occur, but it takes it occurs or it eventually plays out by itself. And that's just the nature of the math of the game. Um, so the machine is not going to try to adjust itself or, you know, OK, I've just taken in all this money. I need to start paying out or anything like that. Uh, that does not occur in a slot machine. It can feel like it sometimes, but it does not occur in a slot machine. It's not an active part of the slot machines programming. Um, and let me see, I'll, I'll grab, uh, I'll grab one more, uh, one more here, uh, Mark as well. Um, mystery of the lamp looks fun. Love the voice, medium volatility. Mystery of the lamp is quickly becoming one of my newer favorite games. It is still a higher in volatility game, but unlike a lot of those other hold and spin feature games or games that have multiple bonuses, obviously mystery of the lamp has the three lamps, you know, sometimes you get the feeling that in those games that have multiple bonuses, like one bonus is like the bad bonus, like, oh, that's you got the crappy bonus. And then one bonus is the really good bonus. But it seems like Mystery of the Lamp is pretty even keel. It doesn't feel it is high in volatility, but there's a lot of stuff to mitigate it. So it doesn't feel as high in volatility. That's why I like it personally. But it is still high in volatility, but it, it can feel like a more medium and volatility game because it does have a lot of those other features to help mitigate it as well. All right, Mark. Okay. 
And let's see. Larry Crow Jr. says payout percentage for gaming machines in the state of Ohio is 85%. That might be the minimum, but that does not tell you what they're actually set to. Uh, just like the state minimum in Nevada is 75%, but that does not tell you anything, unfortunately. Right. Um, you know, 85 is actually pretty good. I mean, I, all things considered, uh, anything between 85 and 98, which is what most games are produced with anyway, um, for the casino to select from, you know, it's still not bad. It's not terrible. Um, now, if you go to any of the illegal game rooms in Texas and Florida, they're set at 50%. That's terrible. Yeah. Which you shouldn't, you would notice. They're, they're illegal game rooms. <laughs> That's right. All right. And Janet says, uh, when playing free play, are my odds the same if I'm playing on my own money? Seems like I win more after my free play is over. Uh, same same difference. Um, the, listen, the, the slot machines does not factor in how the money was presented to the machine before it determines what the outcome is going to be. Okay. Free play, uh, ticket, voucher, money. All it sees is credits and how much you bet. That's it. Um, so it doesn't matter where it's come from. So no, you the same odds. Again, that would be another example of confirmation bias. And it's not, it's, it, I don't want you to think that's you know, a fault of you. It's just human nature. <laughs> we all do. We all fall for this. Every every human being does in some way. Um, but that is an example of confirmation bias because you just notice. You seem to just always win when your free play is over and you've started working on your own cash. But that's a confirmation bias because that's not actually what's going on. It just feels that way sometimes because you're remembering it. And a good example that I always use for this is people saying the top dollar the last offer is always the worst. You know, well, I've actually heard the opposite too, where top, the last one is always the best, right? <laughs> but because you remember getting burned by that last offer being 15 credits or 10 credits, you're just, you remember that. But you forget about all the times where the 15 credits came out on the first offer or the second offer because you didn't get burned. You had more offers to pick from. And so it's it's psychological warfare. <laughs> so that's all I get what you're talk. saying, but yeah, that's not what's going on. And uh, we do have a super chat here, four ninety nine. dollars uh, Back in Ohio, uh, the, Racine, the Racinos are ran by the Ohio Lottery. Are they any different than regular slots at a casino? Um, yes, they are. So a regular slot machine, you it's you versus the machine. That's the easiest way to put it. So a slot machine, by legal definition, is a standalone unit that contains a random number generator, and it makes its own internal random number choice. Every time you hit that button to spin it, it's making its choice inside the machine with no outside influence whatsoever. Outside influence being bingo servers, horse racing, or in this case, lottery. Now, how a lottery system works is essentially what it does is it has, you know, packets of information that are downloaded from, you know, the state server or whatever. And it is essentially the same as scratching off a virtual lottery ticket. It's the same thing as you going to the gas station and just pulling the lottery ticket off the reel, scratching it and revealing a prize or not, and just doing that over and over again. It's a different form of randomness. It's not necessarily bad. You can still win good amounts of money with BLTs. Um, it's just a different form of randomness because you are playing against a lottery system, a lottery pool, rather than the machine itself. So I hope that helps to answer your question there. All right, and uh, let me let me grab uh, uh, grab another one here. Let's see from Brian. Hey, Brantley, do the Ainsworth games go off in 25 cent increments or at any number? And if so, uh, do you have to play off that number? Thank you. So how the Ainsworth system works, um, every single number, including the pennies, including the cents, is calculated in when the machine decides what number to hit at. However, when you get paid out, it rounds up to the nearest whole dollar. So uh, or if you're playing on a quarter machine, it'll round up to the nearest whole quarter or so on and so forth. So it rounds up whenever you hit it. Um, but every number is accounted for in terms of when it decides when that next must hit by number is going to be. So I hope that uh, that helps to answer your question there. And Mark, do you want to grab one? You're more than welcome. Uh, sure. Uh, let's see. I'll make this one quick. Uh... Costa says, forgive me if this has been asked before, but you guys have any knowledge of all aboard? It's volatility high. Very high. That game has destroyed me every time I've played it. I will never yeah. play it again. So there you go. <laughs> there, There's a couple games out there that I just absolutely won't touch. Yeah. That's one that, of them for me. That for is sure. one of them. I tried it. I tried it. You know, Dave said, hey, this is a fun game. 
I haven't forgiven him for that yet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And let's see. Here's a good geeky question. Uh, Theo, I love questions like this. Does the random number generator start with the seed? Yes, it does, but they even randomize the seed so that it's not predictable. So what we're actually talking about is whenever a random number generator in a computer is started, it gets seeded with some initial value, okay? If you knew what the seed was, then in theory, you could predict at what per certain times what the result of the random number would be. Um, but they can't allow that to happen, right? Because then it would be predictable. And the whole point of having a pseudo random number in a, in a slot machine is so it's not predictable. And so they actually, it's very proprietary. Every di different manufacturer does it a little bit differently, but they, they capture numbers and they multiply it with the time, the current timestamp. Because one thing we know about the time is that it's, it's unique. Every second is a unique time, okay? It's a unique number. And they don't use the time because it's the time. They use it because it's a unique number that can't be repeated. But they multiply that, but a lot of different factors, some that they capture outside of the machine. Sometimes they capture it inside of the machine. But regardless, when the machine boots, it is completely unpredictable what the starting seed value was. And so that means you cannot predict what the future outcomes of those random numbers are. Um, and that is something that changed, I think, in the mid 80s or something. Um, before yeah. that, they just the seed was kind of predictable. But after the mid 80s, they, they figured out that they had to do this. So. I think it's because somebody on video poker was able to figure out the timing or something. There, there's a, there's a story there. Um, but yeah, they, they had to change it. And so now it's completely unpredictable. So yeah. All right. Now you see my math side coming out yeah. <laughs> for programming side. Well, Hey, let's talk, let's talk about something else here. Birgit says, I called the Beau Rivage and Biloxi, Mississippi, asking if they have cherries Jubilee. They said they just picked them, uh, picked them up three weeks ago. Uh, why? And will they, ever return them back to the casino. So here's one thing that I got a caution about. Um, when we did our video about Cherry's Jubilee, I think I probably said it like five or 10 times that you can only find Cherry's Jubilee at MGM Grand in Las Vegas. And even out of all the other MGM properties, MGM Grand in Las Vegas, there are so many different slot titles out there with the name Cherry in it. You've got Wild Cherry, Double Cherry, all these other Cherry, Cherry, Cherry. Cherry is a very common name, and so is Jubilee. So a lot of times casinos do get confused, especially if you call somebody in a you know, general operator line and they're like, you have Cherry's Jubilee. Oh, well, I think so. They're probably thinking of another game. Um, Cherry's Jubilee is, is not common at all. Um, I have yet to see it in any other casino other than MGM Grand. Um, and I believe it is, it well, yeah, it is in fact a, game that is specifically licensed just for MGM Grand. So, <laughs> right. you know, other casinos Walmart aren't going to have else. it. Yeah. You know, that's that's the only that's the only thing. I wish Sherry's Jubilee was everywhere. It's an awesome game, but it, it's, again, it's a licensing thing, and it's a very old, very, very old game. So uh, just be cautious about that. If you call a place and you're like, hey, do you have the Cherry's Jubilee? If they say yes, if it's not MGM Grand in Las Vegas, they're not going to have it. They're talking about a different a different Cherries game. That's all. That's all I would say and cautious about. Uh, and hey, we got another ten dollars super chat. You guys have been really awesome today with all the super chats. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Brantley, have you played uh, the Ainsworth slot uh, Crusader King? And could you do a video on it soon? Um, I have not. I haven't played that one actually. I know that um, there's actually a lot more Ainsworth must hit by games that I even imagined before because the wind I, I started looking I, I started looking at a couple and i'm like wow there is a lot of different variations of these and yeah that's one i haven't played yet uh but if i see it yeah absolutely you know i'm always on the lookout especially for like the ainsworth must hit by games if i see a new one um there's there's even a couple here uh at the nugget where i'm at right now uh that i have uh not played before um, and that I've seen and they look pretty cool. So, uh, I think I did a video on one that'll be coming out soon. Um, but yeah, that is, that is one that's, I haven't played before. So I'll, I'll keep my eye out for it. I'll keep my eye out for it. All right. Let's see. Um, I'll take, uh, take one more, uh, take one more here and then hand it on back to you, Mark. Uh, any thoughts on how hold on downtown Las Vegas slots gets worse than the uh gets worse than the strip and even the airport i don't know mark you want to take this one because you're uh, i just like it because he's Polly walnuts from the sopranos yeah, Polly walnuts <laughs> my favorite character of all time uh my name's clarence okay <laughs> you guys will get that reference 
Uh, any thoughts on how the hold on downtown Las Vegas slots uh, got worse than the Strip and even the airport? Uh, I have not noticed that, and I don't think the return to player stats prove that either. I'll have to go look, but I'm pretty sure it's still kind of where it was, and that is that the uh, the downtown is around 2 to 3% higher. Um, the airport, they do not segment out anymore, so we don't know uh, what, what it actually is at the airport, unfortunately. Uh, but again, a payback percentage, just try to, unless you are a local and you play every single day or every single week, um, and you've lived in Vegas for dozens of years, payback percentage is not something you should focus on. Like if all things considered, if you are a local, then over time, you probably do want to play at a, at a property that has higher payouts on average. Okay. Cause you will notice it over time, but for most people going to Vegas for just a vacation and a trip, a weekend or whatever, just play where you're comfortable with playing. It has the games you want to play, has the denominations you want to play, and it's the hotel you want to stay at, that kind of stuff. That's that's what you should really focus on. So absolutely. But and hey, I we got to look at the stats just to see. Yeah, I, I don't we'll, we'll check them out. Hey, we got another super chat here from uh, B Brown Lee. Five dollars. Would you play uh, ten dollar uh, triple stars at four credits single pay line? Four credits. Never heard of that. Never heard of a four credit. I know there's three credit. Um, Honestly, like Triple Stars is one of those games. If I had the budget, I would. Um, it, you know, the budget to play Max, it's a good game to play. It's pretty low in volatility. It's pretty consistent. So if the budget is there, if the budget's right, then yeah, I would play a single line Triple Stars at whatever, you know, whatever the max would be um, on that. But probably not. I mean, four credits, though. I've, I've seen three, but I haven't haven't seen, uh, seen four. Uh, this is a good question here. This is more of a casino employee related question, kind of a Interesting one. Uh, XDJ and Gambler, why do some casinos not allow some of or all of their employees to game at the casinos they work at? Uh, is it a public relations relation? Oh, I can't even talk today. Relations <laughs> issue. <laughs> I need a bottle of water and I don't have one here in my room with me right now. So I'm like, you know, starting to get that dry mouth from, from talking. Yeah. Um, really, yeah, mostly it is going to be a public relations issue. It, you know, it has nothing to do with... Um, anybody being able to game the system any differently or employees being able to do, you know, something different or weird. Now, every casino is going to be very, very different. I have worked for casinos that don't care if employees want to play, they can't, they just can't do it while they're on the job because there's other job duties to be doing. Um, and I've worked for some casinos that one casino I worked at does not even allow employees to be on the property when you're not working. So every casino is going to be different, but mostly it is, it's a public image issue. Um, you know, you think about it, if you have a, if it, for me, for example, you know, I'm, I'm a slot technician. Let's say I work for the, you know, I worked at the casino and I get off duty, I clock out and I sit down to play a machine. And let's say I just happened to hit the grand jackpot. Well, the casino knows that that was a random occurrence. I know that that was a random occurrence. I was very lucky to do that, but the general public is going to look at it like, oh, something's up and all that. And then, you know, people are going to be calling into gaming and it's just going to be a big, big old thing. So yeah, it's not, uh, that's, that's mostly why it's, it's just an image issue and yeah, proud monkey here. You're, you're right <laughs> on that. Yes, they would. And Hey, Hey, Helen, you're also, you're also right. That's a good add on as well. It really depends. I mean, every, every casino is so vastly different on that policy. All right, Mark. All right. Let's see. Uh, one more jackpot says, question, would you play the new Huff and even more Puff slot? Uh, mm. I didn't think I was going to like it, but it's so fun to play. I would love to see you guys play it. Sure, I'll play it. Might try um, it. It's... <sighs> you got to remember what we said earlier in the vi in the live show today. Like, yeah. Play it when you're when it's an optimal time to play it, um, in my opinion. like Build up your bankroll a little bit. Maybe you're having a good night that's when I would decide to go and give it a shot. I'm not going to rush into the casino to play this game. Um, I've seen enough dead spins already on it and low paying line hits and even low paying bonuses. Um, I mean, here's the funny thing. And I, this is just something, again, I'm going to say I've noticed this, but it could be confirmation bias, but this is just something <laughs> I've noticed. Oh, here we go with the, I've noticed. Here we go. Like even I'm saying this now, but I've seen two or three already that have gotten full screen mansions all the way, the big, and the payout wasn't that big of a difference between the one with the smaller reels. 
And so I don't know what the math looks like on that game, but it could be all just deceiving. Like you get all of these mansions and you think, man, this is going to be huge because we've been conditioned that way. We were conditioned on the regular Huff and Puff that if you get a mansion, it's going to be huge. Well, guess what they did on Huff and More Puff? They cut everything in half. Reduced it. <laughs> so Huff and Even More Puff, they cut, cut it in half again. Okay. So it's all an illusion. That's what it all is. And so I, I'll play it just because it's new and I, it does look like fun, but it's not something I would commit a big bankroll to. A hundred bucks, maybe 200 bucks, but that's it. That's the most I'll ever do on it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And Armchair Chef says, should I play a machine that shows a large cash out on the display? Sure, why not? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Again, every spin is separate, so it doesn't matter what it's showing before. That's in the past. It only looks forward. All right. And B. Brown Lee says, why do some slots repeat the same combinations? For example, a top dollar machine I play throws double diamond, double diamond, and a bar off the pay line. Yeah. I'm going to have, I'm going to give you an answer to this, but I want you guys to pay attention to my disclaimer before I say it, because it's super important. I don't want you to run with this. <laughs> so there was a law that changed around 2015. I don't remember the name of the law, but essentially what it allows slot manufacturers to do with the math, the programming of the machine is that after this is the critical part, after the RNG has decided that it is a losing spin, they can manipulate the rule, uh, the, the reels to show something like a near hit or a near miss. But again, I'm going to say it again. This is after the decision has already been made. Okay. This is not them being able to manipulate it before that. Okay. This is after it is going to be determined that it is a losing spin. They are allowed to put some of that stuff in there. And so that's why you see the double diamond, double diamond blank, uh, red seven, red seven, single bar, double bar. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about if you play the top dollar. Um, that's just what's going on there. It was going to be a losing spin anyway. So they're trying to, it's more psychological warfare, right? Just to get you feeling like you almost got something. Uh, so whether you feel like you, whether you like that or not, I'm on, I see both sides of it. It makes it a little bit more exciting, but it also gets a little repetitive. It's like double diamond, double diamond. I'm not going to get it. So stop showing it to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so it really depends on what side of the fence you're on there, but that's what's going on. Absolutely. And hey, we got $5 here from John. John, thanks, buddy. Really do appreciate it. New slot machines that have four different games to choose from. Uh, does changing the games change the odds? So um, it could, uh, essentially. But the thing is, is when you have a game that has multiple games on it, each one of those is going to be set up independently of another. And what I mean by that is they don't communicate with, the, with one another. I've seen many cases where, you know, players playing a game and they're like, you know, oh, this one's hitting a lot, this one's hitting a lot. Well, now that I've put so much money into it, I'm going to change it to this one. That other game doesn't know what you just did. It's it's completely separate. So it could, I mean, it depends. You know, this is another one that it would be game specific and, um, you know, obviously based on around denomination and show, so on and so forth, but it could, it potentially could. But yeah, every time you, there multiple games, multiple denoms, anything like that, just know they're programmed separately uh, and independently on that. All right. Uh, Katie says, uh, our addicting behavior goes back to the time of our ancestors thousands of years ago. Opportunity, unpredictable rewards, quick repeatability. It's the loop in our brain gets caught on. Very, very good. Well very, said, very good, Katie. Katie. Very that's well said. what's going on. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great, uh, great comment there. And uh, Josh here says, uh, hey, fellas, just starting, uh, starting to play slots. And I'm curious what it means that a machine has been uh, reset after the hand pay. Are they resetting the payout percentage of the machine? No. So what that essentially means, when you get a hand pay, the machine is set to lock up at $1,200. $1,200 the machine is going to lock up. What that basically does is it just freezes the screen. It freezes everything so that they can come and verify what the amount is and all of that. Take the time to fill out the paperwork and all of that. They turn that key. It unlocks the machine. It goes right back to, right back to playing how it was. That key does not do anything. And here's the other thing to keep in mind. So you know, you'll see attendants walking around with, you know, like their cards, like they might put their card in the machine or anything like that. Anything outside of the machine cannot change any actual settings. It can't change payback percentage or anything like that. You can do little things like volume on some devices, but it cannot change any payback percentage. That part is on the secure portion inside with through the secure USB stick, through a secure SD card, something like that, that only the gaming commission has. So attendants do not even have the ability 
to change any kind of payback percentage settings or anything like that. All that's doing is essentially unlocking it. It Again, when you get a hand pay, it just freezes the mas machine so they can come and verify the amount, fill out the paperwork, verify who you are, all of that, and then turn that key and unlock it. That's all that that is. All right. I'll take some here. Oh, I thought you froze there for a minute. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, Jeff Parsons says, uh, you mentioned illegal game rooms in Florida. They seem to be everywhere near me. What is up with these arcades in quotes? That's what they are. They call them yeah. arcades, but they're they're illegal. They Can they pay off? Guys, this is, the, this is so important that you listen to me here. Like, I, you got to stay out of those places. I mean, I don't say that about a lot of things, but there is a big reason why you should only be playing at licensed casinos because you have the protection in case something goes wrong. And you know that there are a lot of eyeballs on everything to make sure it's on the up and up. The casinos are not changing payback percentages whenever they want. It's not the wild West. Those, the arcades, the illegal game rooms are the wild West. There is nobody looking after them whatsoever. And they are illegal. They are getting shut down. And there's also a lot of crime. I'm not trying to scare everybody, but if you're going to play, please, for the love of God, play in a licensed casino where you have those protections in place, okay? If it looks like an arcade and it looks a little off, like you see fire links, but they're in a cabinet that doesn't look like something you would find in a regular casino, that should be a huge red flag. Guys, they have uh, Chinese knockoffs of fire link and all those now where they simply have a, just a Dell PC sitting behind there that's running the game, which means they can do whatever they want, <laughs> yeah. whatever payback percentage they want. It's a custom game. Um, they have just, that cannot happen in a casino, a real casino yeah. that cannot happen in a real casino. Cannot that stuff cannot happen in a real casino. And that's why we strongly urge you. If you are going to wager anything, um, I don't care if you have stories that you've won and it's been successful. Just please just stay out of those. Just yeah. <laughs> from Brantley and I, not Please worth it. Out of it. <laughs> that and social casinos. Yeah. Um, hey, really, really quick, guys, because we got about 730 of you watching right now on um, Facebook, on YouTube, and on X as well. We're broadcasting on three platforms. Uh, if you are not yet subscribed on YouTube, YouTube is where all of our full length videos are. And we have so many videos detailing all of the topics, all of the questions that um, many of you have asked tonight. It is 100% free to subscribe. And hey, you know what? It's good luck. It helps us out and it's good karma as well. So hit that subscribe button if you have not yet done so already. We do shows like this every single Sunday. Um, again, 100% free to subscribe uh, on that. And you'll get a lot more content uh, and you'll get notified when uh, when we go live, stuff like that. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. 100% free on that. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and uh, take, uh, I'm going to take uh, one more question and then uh, we can go ahead and start uh, rounding out here. Stephanie says, uh, if a machine is sitting idle, no one playing it, is it possible that the winning jackpot combination uh, came up at that time? Hope you understand my question. Uh, yeah, I do understand your question. So slot machines never go idle. Um, so you're on the right track. You know, every time a, when a slot machine is plugged in and it's on, it's constantly cycling those numbers. Now it's cycling them very, very, very fast. Obviously it's a microprocessor. It can run extremely quickly. Uh, is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. Had somebody hit the button at that exact same second when it was cycling those numbers and came up with that and it stopped at that point. Yeah, it's possible it could have happened. Um, but again, it's cycling it. I mean, gosh, I don't know. Do you even know the, the exact number? I mean, it's, it's it's too much for us to even millions per, <laughs> like millions per second uh, yeah. it's it's crazy it's crazy on that but all right mark i'll let you uh go ahead and grab one there if you want okay uh let's see uh mustang dave says i believe the class two vgt machines are server-based bingo correct that is correct those are run by bingo that you're playing bingo you're not playing slot machines so uh, most of what we talk about on here is just defaulting to being class three slot machines like you'd find in Vegas and most casinos. Uh, let's see. Min K says, Mark, why the ketchup bottles? <laughs> I have ketchup. little ketchup bottles. So uh, on our channel on Gamble Smart, anytime we have something that kind of catches on, it ends up on the shelf up here. That's why I have the tinfoil hat and the ketchup bottles, some <laughs> other stuff up here. So uh, you have to watch to find out. Absolutely. 
Uh, well, right. guys, and also to uh, remind you too, I will be on uh, Gamble Smarts live on Wednesday yes. as well. So if you're not uh, yeah. y- not yet over there, head over there because we do we do lives over there as we well. We have a lot of fun with Brantley. So, and um, uh, as a remember, uh, tomorrow is Member Monday. So if you are just now becoming a member, remember you do get that ex- uh, extra added a live stream tomorrow's on Monday evening. As always, it's 7 p.m. Central. Um, again, please do hit that subscribe button on YouTube. We really do appreciate it. Share your favorite videos too. We always appreciate the love and support from all of you guys. Um, so we're going to go ahead. We are going to conclude the show uh, tonight, but I wanted to thank you all again so much for joining us and spending our Sunday evening here. What a great show. We had an amazing turnout. And thank you all so much for all of the super chats as well. As always, best of luck to you. Stay safe. We'll see you again next episode, which will be next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central. Take care, guys.